how do you reverse engineer crazy BHAG goals, big, hairy, audacious goals into an actual structured reverse engineered plan? So we're talking about vivid vision and then reverse engineering. And thank you so much for taking time. So the idea of the vivid vision concept, it really is anchored in the fact that most entrepreneurs or partners in a law firm can really visualize what they want their company to look like, act like, and feel like, but no one else in the company can read your mind. And you get frustrated walking in in the morning, wondering why people made that stupid idea. They didn't have a stupid idea. It was the only idea they had aligned with what they could see. And if they can't see what you can see, they're making decisions aligned with what their best guess is. You know, it's, it's almost like if you were to see the movie, The Sound of Music, and I said, there's a picnic scene where they're singing and dancing up in the, in the Alps. If you've never seen that movie and I said, recreate the picnic, you might have kids at a park playing croquet, but that's crazy because if you've seen the movie, you know, they're singing and dancing in the Alps. Well, the same is true in your business. And I've also heard so many entrepreneurs over the years say that they're so intuitive. Well, the reality is the entrepreneur or the partners in a law firm are no more intuitive than anyone else in your company. The reason your intuition is so strong is it's anchored or tied to that vision that you have for your company. So the idea is to take the ideas out of your mind and create a four or five page description that describes what your company looks like, acts like, and feels like in the future. Once your vision is really, really clear, then it's time for your executive and your leadership team to figure out how to make that come true. You know, much like a homeowner, if I was building a home, I know what I want the home to look like. I know how I want it to flow. I know how I want it to feel. I know the types of rooms and the decorating that I want. I know the cabinetry and the finishing, but I don't know how to do electrical. I don't know how to do plumbing. I don't know how to do drywall. I have no idea how to pour a foundation. But if I'm very clear on describing my vision of my home, not a one sentence mission statement, but if I'm very clear on describing all aspects of my home, the contractor can grow, go away and come back with blueprints or the plan to make my vision come true. So in this case, your leadership team will come up with the plan to make your vivid vision for your law firm three years from now come true. And then your employees can figure out how to work that plan to make your vision come true without driving you crazy. So the reverse engineering process starts with really anchoring yourself three years in the future, leaning out almost as if you leaned out to December 31st, 2024, and you walked around your company, right? Imagine if you hopped into the DeLorean time machine with Michael J. Fox and, and the doctor and you know the three of you hopped off into the future and you, you arrived at December 31st, 2024, and you walked around you know, Bader Scott, and, and you, you saw the offices and you saw the buildings and you saw the culture and the meeting rhythms. You described the pulse and the energy of the employees and how your customers are interacting. You described the company as if it had already happened three years from now. That's the anchoring. The reverse engineering also comes down to thinking about how you want to create a culture, how you want your employee net promoter to, to, to score to be, what you want your customer net promoter score to be. If you start where you are and just make it bigger, you just kind of end up making the ball of elastic bands bigger. But if you lean out three years and only three years, you can think, think about your revenue targets for three years from now, your profit target three years from now, your customer net promoter score three years from now, and your employee net promoter score three years from now. Those four goals, you can have those four goals three years out, two years out, one year out, and then you can think about the core projects to start making those come true. So over three years, you start arching out towards those. Back in 2001, when Brian, the CEO, and myself at 1-800-GOT-JUNK, we were sitting down with our lawyer, Andrew Sherman, incidentally, we were at the top of the Hyatt Hotel in Vancouver, and he said, where do you see your company in five years? And both of us instinctively said 100 million. And we laughed and kind of looked at each other and said, like, where did that come from? Because we'd never discussed it. We were doing 2 million in revenue and we said that five years later, we'd do a hundred million. So that night we actually started to sketch out what it would look like to do 60 million the year before and 30 million the year before and 16 and how we would reverse engineer into that number. And lo and behold, we did 106 million. We gave up no equity. We had no debt. We ranked as the number two company in Canada to work for. 
We had an amazing company culture. We landed 5,200 stories in the media, including being on Oprah. And it was because we were so clear on the vision and we reverse engineered how to make that come true that then our team could just execute on that plan. If you know, Bill mentioned he's hired me as his personal coach. He's paying me $48,000 a year to coach him. Plus he's cutting me a check in three years, a bonus check for what coaching is worth. I think he's putting his COO into our COO Alliance and he's got some of his managers in our Invest in Your Leaders course. He's really investing deep in himself and in his growth. But don't forget to also grow your people because if you grow just yourself, you're going to get incremental re or you're going to get some kind of a return. But if you grow all of your managers and leaders, that's where you're going to get incremental returns, right? You get the leverage of all of those people being much better. So the number one metric that I have in all of the companies that I've coached, and I've coached companies that went on to rank number one in their country, three or four countries worth. I coached the number two company on Glassdoor, the number 13 company to work for on Glassdoor. It's always around focusing on employee net promoter score above all else, above profit, above revenue, above customer. The employee satisfaction is key. So every six months, I ask all the employees in the company one question. On a scale of one to 10, how enthusiastically would you rank or recommend our company as a place to work? You take the percentage of people that give you nines and tens, those are your promoters. You subtract the percentage of people that give you one through sixes, those are your detractors. And you end up on a scale of somewhere between negative 100% and positive 100%. The goal, according to net promoter score, is to be positive 50 or greater. My goal for all my clients is positive 80 or greater to really have that raving fan company. When we won number two company in all of Canada to work for, we beat out 1.4 million companies. We had a positive 98% net promoter score. So you have to get into that raving fan category. But when you obsess about your employees' happiness, they're going to take care of your customers. They're going to work harder. They're going to work nights. They're going to say, yeah, how fast? They're going to work with more care. They're going to care about your core values. They're going to push out the negative grumpy people because they know you care about them. But if they feel like you care about your customers so much, they always feel like second class citizens. So I always go with employee net promoter score first, customer net promoter score second, then the profit dollar figure, and then the revenue number comes from all of that. The second point on this bill is that with your employee net promoter score, when I ask that question, I have a follow-up question that says, thanks very much for your rating. What's one thing we could do to make this the best company to work for? Six months later, I say, what's one thing we could do to make this the best company to work for that doesn't cost any money? And you'll be amazed at the responses you get from your employees. So what I do is I just do what they tell me. If, if they want more vacation time, great, how much? Here you go, five weeks paid. It's so easy to grow an amazing culture when you just give your employees what they want. And when you, they know you care about them, they'll go through brick walls to build your company. I'll give one final word, and this, will, this one will spin your head around a little bit. None of this actually matters, Bill. At the end of the day, and none of this actually matters. We're all gonna die. So we need to stop taking ourselves so seriously and have a little bit of fun in the office and a little bit of fun with our employees and a little bit of fun with our clients because we're all just walking each other home. This is just what we do to make money. And the more that you can incorporate having a good time at work and decompress with your team and decompress with your customers, Watch what happens as you start to magnetize your firm and your city to become literally the magnet for anybody that wants to use you. But if you only focus on law, you're missing the point.